Now you're piggybacking off of someone else's drama so that you can draw them up sympathy for yourself. Dennis, can I, Dennis, can so, I, Dennis, no, 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 because I don't want to move past this point because this is like a really, this is a really topic. Dennis, have you ever loved, Dennis, 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 Dennis really have you ever loved somebody Nicholas. before? Nicholas. Don't Nicholas, you're, you're. Yeah, man, I don't fuck. No, don't, this is, this is like a really dishonest <laughs> thing. No, Dennis, this is a really good question. Have you ever been in love before? Okay, look. <laughs> Okay, so last night I was given the opportunity to chat with a YouTuber whom I've made a significant video on about a year ago, and I know you all read the title, so you know it's Deaf Noodles. In 2020, when we had drama, Deaf Noodles chose not to talk to me, but to go on John Swan's stream. In 2021, when we had our drama and I made a video on him, um, well, before that he had chose to debate Augie. Uh, so finally, Deaf Noodles took my call during a Twitter Space stream, and we were able to interact for the first time ever. Weird, right? Just to be clear, this is a second channel video, so I'm not going to give you the whole backstory of Deaf Noodles. Frankly, I have a 50 minute video on that and a 20 minute follow up. I'm also making a new video now, so I'm sure you'll get the summary there. I'm taking time away from making that video to make this one, so I'm just going to give you the essentials. Over the last few months, Deaf Noodles, or Dennis Fetosa, became increasingly agitated by a reaction YouTuber named Papa Gut. Dennis articulated that Papa Gut has made around 21 videos on him, and in some days he tweeted multiple times about Dennis. Uh, not sure why Dennis of all people is upset about the sheer number of videos made on somebody, uh, but I guess that's a question for another day. Wink wink. Instead of engaging with any of Papa Gut's actual arguments, Dennis made a tweet saying that Papa Gut looks like a pedophile and is more importantly implying that he actually is one by the putting the joking part in quotations. So in that reply uh, between like this whole post or whatever, Papa Gut gets called out in the comments by a random Twitter user who goes by uh, Danny Kajan. Ja95 goes, he's someone who thinks about fucking kids. That's not cool. I'm, I'm not a, I, I'm not a big fan of, unless you're Augie who tweets like nuclear take, fucking kids is bad. I think that's a pretty widely accepted take from everybody else. Robbie Rotten comes in and said, this person saying that you think about fucking kids, Papa Gut. Is that true? I, I, that's just such a ballsy fucking thing to write to somebody. It's just, hey, by the way, listen, buddy, I've been watching your content for a while, but do you want to rape children? Um, I, to be honest, I probably would have blocked that guy on site. Anyways, Papa Gut, much more charitable than I am, jumps in and goes, the joke was, if she's old enough to bleed, she's old enough to breed, which I'm sure everyone has heard awkwardly in their, uh, late teens by some fucking weirdo at a college party. Uh, thank you so much, Andres Lopez, for the advice. It was a satirical call out since he allegedly slept with a 14 year old. It's a joke that I've condemned multiple times, but that person isn't interested in honesty. Uh, now, one of the major parts of this that you're not gonna probably see uh, from just on, like if you looked at this on Twitter is that Deaf Noodles and Papa Gut talked about this previously, which is why it's more awkward when this is what Deaf Noodles says about Papa Gut. Motherfucker got famous on TikTok for joking about fucking a 14 year old girl and then got a offended. Someone joked about him, but you know what? He was right. Whoa, 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 what do you mean by that, Deaf Noodles? Jesus, what was he right about? Fuck, that's crazy, bro. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm oh, sorry, sorry. Oh, and here's the pictures of Papa Gut with that very unkept beard. He needs to get the Keemstar products to fix whatever the fuck he's got going on his face there. I'm not going to even say that De Deaf Noodles is inherently wrong about that last comment. Jesus Christ. He fits an archetype of a YouTuber. There's a lot of guys. You'll find 50 fucking people who look just like Papa Gut, okay? That's, that's, that is an archetype of a fucking, of a fucking YouTuber. This is the big tweet. Uh, if you think this is a joke, sure, okay, I could see what you're saying. If you think that he's just accusing him out of spite, yeah, I can see what you're saying. When Deaf Noodles puts joking in parentheses, he's implying that <laughs> Papa Gut actually wanted to fuck the child. That's what he's doing. It's absolutely an allegation. And this is somebody who knows better. Watch this. So, uh, I'm sorry this offended you. It's, uh, you <laughs> I do, it didn't really offend me. Uh, anyway, can I talk about the old enough I mean, to bleed? You wouldn't have brought it up unless it did. So okay. clearly, I mean, I just disagree. I, I, I listen. Okay, 
So let's talk about the old enough to bleed, old enough to breed. The full joke yeah. that I made was if she's old enough to bleed, she's old enough to breed. Thank you very much, Andre Lopez, for the advice. So Andre Lopez at the time was a 23-year-old TikToker with like 20 million fans. I know Andre is. I actually broke that story, so I know exactly what you're talking about. Well, which yeah, which story is that? 15-year-old girl, the, the one with the recording. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So I that so like regardless of my intention was to call that out. I would use humor to call stuff out, but it missed because people misinterpreted it. It's an inappropriate joke regardless. I mean, what's the context? That's the thing that we come keep coming back to. Humor is all about context. I, I know, I know, but I, I but like you threw out the old enough to bleed, old enough to breed thing. I'm just like explaining know, the I'm take on it. It's still it's still inappropriate because of the sphere that I was in, and like people were very sensitive to pedophile jokes, which makes perfect sense. And so like now I'm more sensitive to making like that joke. And I'm gonna stop because I am worried about the way that. My in, what I'm saying it's is interpreted. Play something to you. I know, At but it's not just all. Sometimes thinking it's a that your ears deceive you, and that this makes no fucking sense in the context I just showed you. That's because this clip is about five months old. In this clip I'm showing you now, Deaf Noodles is arguing why Papa Gut should be able to make pedophile jokes like that because that's how comedy works. Context matters, okay? So Deaf Noodles, who was told the exact story that happened with Papa Gut, right? And even argued as to why that joke was okay, has gotten so mad at him, he spite accused him of pedophilia on his fucking timeline. And we're gonna get into more reasons why that's insane. About the way that people receive information, and like we need to make no, sure we God. speak about it in the right way. Yes, it is. Hey. Louis C.K. did a seven-minute bit on SNL where okay. he talks about a pedophile in his neighborhood offering okay. him McDonald's and him getting in his car and getting molested. But, but we're not on SNL, and so like it wasn't appropriate for no, me to make that I'm joke on TikTok. About context, that's the whole thing. In my show, people know that they're clicking on a comedy show. It's and and by the way, if you're if you're remembering that logic where Deaf Noodles is a character, he doesn't do this shit anymore. And, and people didn't know they were clicking on a comedy show. And if you watch the most recent comments on his new video, half of those people are saying that not a single joke fucking landed even in his current comedy so not much to see here folks so then death noodles drops a fbi los angeles put this motherfucker on a watch list he looks mad and suspicious i, I also want to draw the attention of this clip um this is somebody who's actively suing keemstar over a fucking pedophile joke an obvious pedophile joke in context i think that weaponizing sexual assault weaponizing pedophilia weaponizing any form of abuse is extremely fucked up. This is from the same interview with the same guy that he said to put on an FBI watch list and called a pedophile yesterday. I, I mean, I understand it's like dime a dozen times when Deaf Noodles acts like a schizophrenic fucking hypocrite. But I mean... It's so fucking easy. Why does he make it this easy? Following the Twitter interaction, Dennis started to pile on the joke, saying that Papa Gut drives a pedo van and he sold merch with Papa Gut crying on it, which I, I mean, I don't really care about, but that was following Papa Gut's emotional response. Eventually, Deaf Noodles started a Twitter space and I was able to ask him about this more directly. I know Nick Diori wanted to go on or someone just sent me something saying he wanted yeah, to go he on. Yeah, he can, re he can replace my spot. That's no problem. Okay. Hello. What's up? How's my audio? It's fine. Perfect. I don't think we've actually spoken before um, in like the, the full year that we've had an issue. It's weird. I, I just kind of want to... Hold up. Oh, sure. Just saying, what, what issue do you think we have? Because I don't think we... I don't think... I think you're oh, kind you of... Like me? Wait, you like me? I, I honestly... I... I don't know you, so how can I form an opinion about you? I don't know. It's kind of weird. Be, uh, pretty uptight about it a lot, so I don't know. Pretty. So what what leads you to that conclusion? Um, probably like the four tweets about the Michelin Man uh, that you was that you didn't know it was like made out of tires, so you thought it was soft. When you meme stuff, you you according to your interpretation, you are doing it because you're tight with a person. Yeah, I typically don't like a lot of the people I make videos on. That's why I say mean things to them online. All right. Well, I guess we differ in that sense. Sure. I, I guess I kind of just wanted to ask you if you're like, are you are you self aware in this? Do you kind of understand why people think you're a little crazy? Look, I've been talking to people for I don't know how long this has been going, but you know, I'm listening. I, I almost feel bad uh, for you because a lot of these whether or not people have been insane. Think I'm crazy, like, like well, you mean like mental institution no, crazy? No, no, you no, mean no, like no, but people just think that you're crazy, like, kind of like recently. Me? 
Like, how crazy? Like, what do you mean? I, I mean, like, just off your rocker recently. Not, like, fucking put this guy in a cage. Off He's going to hurt somebody. Crazy. Okay. What? Well, off my rocker. Because uh, I feel like we've been looping for, like, the past year or so. I, I feel like the same critiques that I've made in, uh, I don't know, like, fucking December of 2020, was that? Are, like, the same ones mm -hmm. that you're hearing now. Um, like, yeah. it, it's the and, same and thing. What, what do you think, like, uh, I mean, I pretty much outlined everything I did before you even made, I think, your videos. I don't remember specifically when you published them, but I remember end of 2019, it was before a lot of people on commentary started making videos. I, I did an interview With John where I Juan, literally right? talked about the exact things. Oh, you're talking, talking about, about the Vulture one, right? So this actually circles back to a point that was made hours ago, which is, you know, uh, to, to what extent do people want to accept what I do or place what they wanted to be on it? Okay, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I, but Dennis, then really I, I watched, I'm the only one on the call who's listened to your Vulture interview. I'm the only one here who has. Uh, okay. I, have you ever seen Good. my videos on you? Uh, no, actually, I haven't. Okay, because I covered this in the second one. Uh, I have a quote from the guy that you talked to from the vault. That is um, Jesse David Fox. Yeah. Okay. This so explain. Talk about it. All right. So this is the quote that he said. It's not always clear which part is real and which part is a joke and what the joke even is sometimes. As much as he says it's all a character, I don't know if I always believe him. You know, he, he clearly gets something out of reporting in his way about this world. Even after talking to Dennis, my producers and I were unsure which parts were real and which weren't. He doesn't understand the backlash to Dennis while also saying that he doesn't understand when he's being real and when he's making a joke or what the joke is. It's not always clear which part is real and which part is a joke. And even what the joke even is sometimes, as much as he says it's just a character, I don't know if I always believe him. You know, he clearly mm -hmm. gets something out of reporting in this world. And even after talking to Dennis, my producers and I were unsure which parts were real and which parts weren't. So you're saying that this is like the biggest comedy podcast. I heard you say that earlier. Uh, and even they don't understand yeah. your gimmick. So I... I mean, at what point do you kind of go insane? I mean, that's like, fair insanity? to say about that's fair to say about Colbert too. People thought Colbert was a hundred percent real when he was doing his shit. Yeah, but there are people who also I, think Colbert it, is like funny. It, it through, you're you're getting right now. You're getting like a summary of what he said. And if you go through, he actually asks me that. He asks me. He said, "Are yeah, you but this serious?" Is his post interview are you not, summary. He, exactly. So he so, doesn't believe of course, you. He, he's teasing his interview with that summary, right? I mean, the full context of everything I explained isn't presented there because otherwise you wouldn't listen to the podcast. But I explain it very clearly from A to Z, how I arrived at the concept of the channel, how it evolved and what is real and what isn't. And that's fine that that was his conclusion. That seems to be the conclusion that a lot of people arrive at. That's totally fine. The intention is still the same. But now, it's not just it, it a lot of people point. that arrive there, Dennis. Now, like, there are people who point are like of... ontologically like like they're or, like opposed to each other. If I'm agreeing it with somebody on the H three H three subreddit and Adam McIntyre and Cat Tenbarge, people who are completely different than me that I disagree with almost everything else they say, there's like a large sample size of people who have this issue with you. Like what what do you want me to do? I want you to realize that you're the problem, not everyone else around you. So when did I say that everybody else was a problem? I mean, th then I'm the problem. That's, That's what fine. the hope on the stream problem. is. It's like, oh, everyone just doesn't get my jokes. You've been doing the same bit That's since 2020. If, then if the I'm joke was that everybody else is stupid and I'm the funniest comedian that's ever lived, you know what? I Let's start a frenemies and I'll, I'll hand you an award right now. Uh, I think we'd be great together, but I don't think that's true. I never said I was the funniest comedian that's ever lived. All I did was say that I wanted to tell jokes every day and that the news made it easy because there's news happening all the time. So here's yeah, the thing. Yeah, and you talk I, about news, but real news. I think my intentions are. I, like I said earlier, I created a Dilbert sketch. If people want a Dilbert comic strip, if people want to see it as Hemingway and expect it to be Hemingway, then that's on them. That's my problem for creating the Dilbert uh, comic strip and only being talented enough to create a Dilbert comic strip. I wish I was Hemingway or F. Scott Fitzgerald, but I'm not. So this is what I'm giving people, and this is what it is. I mean, you're, if people are legitimately asking me for, to be something that I'm not. This is my authentic self, my ideas, and 
I, I don't know how else to be something else. All right. Well, we're not going to agree on this one. Uh, Want to move on to the next point? Hold on one second. Here's the thing. If you don't like what he does or what he says, you can block him, mute him, don't watch him, Preach. and stop yeah, complaining about it. I, I, Preach! Yeah, that, that's fantastic. Right, yes, I know. Sometimes point? he says things that are way too inflammatory. Like, that that still reaches out after the I don't care if they're I don't agree with everyone who got on the stream tonight and said that your joke was too mean. I, I, I don't think that you can um, condemn him for calling Papa Gut somebody who looks like a pedophile just based off of that one comment. I, I totally disagree with the allegedly Angelo guy. I think that he sounds the way that uh, Deaf Noodles thinks Papa Gut looks. So I, I'm, I'm not condemning Dennis for that. I'm not condemning Dennis for any edgy jokes. My problem with Dennis is that the joke, quote unquote, that he made isn't just, oh, pop like a pedophile. It's, I I'll read it to you. Motherfucker got famous on TikTok for quote unquote, joking about fucking 14 year old girls. Then he got offended that- Did he though? About him. So, so, so he, is he, that how he got famous? Is that he before, but was serious and wanted to fuck children. So, so here's the thing. I'm done tech, the FBI. We covered this before, but I'm happy to walk through it again. Sure. So, is fucking children funny to you? Uh, could be in certain cir circumstances of a joke. Absolutely. Okay, so talking about a grown man from the point of view of a grown man fucking a 14-year-old child is objectively funny to you. That's depends on the funny. context of the joke. Absolutely. So tell me a context. So tell me a context where it would be funny. Uh, I think that it's funny that you made a joke about Papa Gut fucking children because it makes you look like an idiot. Okay, so. Here's off, I didn't say he fucks children, I said No, you he said looks. that he was quote his unquote joke, joking. The his implication joke, however, is that he wasn't joking joke, when he made a comment joke, about fucking a 14 year old girl. So his joke, we're talking about the quote unquote joke part, which is what you brought out. Yes, that's my You're problem. clearly not getting it, dude. His joke, his joke was, if she, if she bleeds, she breeds. Shout out to Andres Lopez for the life tip or some shit like that. And your implication so, is that he wasn't joking about that, that he actually wants to fuck children <laughs> if they bleed. Okay, so so essentially the joke is, thank you for te for teaching me that I should fuck children, Andreas Lopez. So now my question to you is, objectively, is fucking children funny to you, from you? I mean, I don't think Papa Gut's a fucking comedian, but my point is, no, you're saying that that uh, statement uh, that you were describing it. Is to it, me is it objectively is it objectively funny? To fuck children. Wait, I'm so confused. A 14 year old girl. Wait, what does it matter if the joke is funny? Is your, is your like, no, 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 ethics no, no, on whether I'm you can asking, make it, whether the joke is funny or not? Yeah. I'm trying to understand. To you, is it objectively funny to fuck for a grown man, imagine Papa Gut, to fuck a 14 year old girl? Is it objectively funny to you? Uh, no, I was going to sleep at night thinking of Papa Gut having sex with a child. Is that your thing? So that's why I put it in quotes, because I don't think it's funny. I don't think it's a joke to so say that. So why didn't you put say, fucking a 14-year-old like girl a in pedophile. quotes? Why did you put joking in quotes? Because the obvious like implication is that he wasn't being serious when he said he was joking. You're saying calling him somebody, out for joking. Saying that somebody looks like a pedophile is uh, it, it, it's all the... I don't care somebody about the looks so? like a pedophile part. I think that joke's fine. I care about you with the implication that Papa Gut actually wanted to fuck kids. You're literally talking in circles, dude. <laughs> yeah, because he's not answering That's, the question. That's how the fucking circle goes. We did, we did get to a point where he said he doesn't think it's funny. Now, uh, so I, I'm trying yeah, to I understand what, jokes literally, I, what, like, what we're going, Jokes you know? aren't, like, created whether someone thinks they're funny. There, there are going to be people who find every single I mean, joke not funny. Effectively, effectively, you would laugh at every single joke like that if somebody told it from that point of view of a grown man fucking a 14-year-old girl. If it's a, if a, a different one, if, you, if it's like a, written differently, you would objectively find one that's actually funny. We're not having a conversation of a, whether Papa Gut's looks funny. Like Papa Gut's fucking a Nick, what is your point? Nick, what is your point? My point is he accused Papa Gut of being a pedophile because he was mad that Papa Gut was making videos on him. It's pretty fucking How was that an when, how is that an accusation when you yourself said you don't think it's a, to, to talk, for him to say that he's fucking a 14-year-old girl? What are you talking about? A, You're putting parentheses around joking. The obvious implication that everyone is drawing is saying how is it an accusation about what you said it yourself. And when people are saying this to you multiple days in a row, you've yet to correct a single person on it. So, I mean, like, how I'm not the only person who came to this conclusion. So wait, you came to the conclusion that he was fucking girls? No, I came girls? to the conclusion that you're saying he wasn't actually joking and he actually wanted to fuck girls. 
Where in my tweet did it say that? Motherfucker got famous on TikTok for quote unquote joking about fucking 14 year old girls. The part that you logic. quoted is joking. I explained my logic behind it, and you supported it by saying that you don't think it's a joke. Yeah, so I what's think that, point? Wait, I said I don't think it's funny. I didn't say I don't think it's a joke. Okay. So I guess we kind of agree, kind of, we kind of have no, like, somewhat of an agreement. subjectively bad. Like, and I know that mm -hmm. you fucked up multiple pedophiles. You don't sound like you know what you're talking about Okay, thank all. you very much. But, but can we get the peanut gallery to stop? Um, so I, I don't understand how you're also categorizing. Can you, like, can you guys hear me? Not like a spite driven move. Can you guys so, like, hear me? Yeah. So you were complaining previously be... on this stream. Can people hear me? Yes. Oh well. Oh, well. Can, you yeah, my God. can you still hear me right now or no? Yes. Yes. Okay. Can you still? I'm just testing my microphone. You hear me still? Good. <laughs> I'm testing. Yeah. Okay. Loud and clear. It yes. works great. Cool, cool, cool. Okay. Thank so you. what's what's happening in here? What are we what are we doing? Unfortunately, thank you, Papa Gut. That's where the conversation abruptly ends. Following this, Papa Gut entered the discussion and, well, derailed me super hard. Um, I understand this was his drama that's not lost on me, but I guess what I'm saying is I wish he could have just let me finish. Sure, he was able to challenge Death Noodles well in some areas, but I found the majority of the conversation to be largely unproductive for most of the combo, I guess. Um, I will say it was super weird that Death Noodles wanted me to moderate the discussion, but unfortunately that job is literally impossible when emotions are clearly running high and neither party wants to listen or stay on subject. A mute button would have gone a long way, but I kind of just threw my hands up and said fuck it after uh, one attempt at reeling people in. Either way, me and Mr. Gut talked about this extensively on a Twitch VOD that you'll be seeing tomorrow. In the meantime, go give me a follow on Twitch.tv, because that's where this shit happens, and then go watch this clip of Smaggle Daggle owning a senator candidate. I, I don't know why he was there. Anyway, back to you, Death. Yeah, hold no, on, I, I, hold I, on. I, I just I, want to say something. Yeah. Michael, uh, the primary is in August 2nd. What the fuck are you doing here? What are you doing here? The primaries, the Kansas primaries is August 2nd. Why aren't you campaigning? Why are you in a fucking Twitter group chat with Deaf Noodles and Keemstar? Whoa, what kind of, what kind of fucking dumbass bullshit is that? And oh, uh, I, 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 may, may I respond or do, uh, may, may I respond? Yeah, yeah, you can respond. Or, or do you just do you just want to make your point and just be abusive and insulting? Oh, abusive and insulting. Are you going to cry like a bitch? Are you going to cry like a bitch? I don't even Dennis, 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 Dennis,